Hey everyone, before I begin on these stories, I just wanted to give you guys a trigger warning. A lot of these stories are really violent and involve school shootings, so if that's something you want to avoid, click off this video right now. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a dive into these stories. In 2017, in my last semester of high school, some friends and I decided to skip the pep rally for the girls' varsity basketball team making the playoffs for the first time. My last period of the day was theater tech. I was really just taking it as a fine arts credit, and two of my friends in the grade below me were in that class with me. We decided to skip the pep rally, leave school early, and go to the nearby Taco Bell like we did every day. However, administrators and security guards patrolled the parking lots to catch kids trying to skip, so we took a detour instead through the nature trail on campus in order to avoid them. Once in the nature trail, we had came across this kid that I hadn't seen before. He was a skinny white kid with shaggy black hair, wearing baggy jeans, and a plain white t-shirt. He was shorter than me, but the most notable thing about him was his general look of dishevelment. His hair was really wild and full of leaves and twigs. His plain white t-shirt was dirty, and the knees of his jeans were stained green and brown. He actually seemed like he had been crawling around in the nature trail. I remember wondering for a split second if maybe he lived there. When we came upon him, we were walking in one direction parallel to the school and to the back of the parking lot, and he was coming directly toward us. I knew the nature trail well enough to know that there was a bend that led deep into the woods, and I figured he had come from there. He was out of breath, and he looked scared. My two friends said hi to him. My friends were in the grade below me, and later told me that the kid was in their grade, and was just acquaintances with my two friends. It was really just supposed to be a quick hello, but I couldn't help but notice how scared he looked, and how suspicious he seemed of us. He asked us what we were doing in the woods, and we told him we were skipping the pep rally. One of my friends then asked, What have you been doing out here? Camping? Me and my other friend kind of gave a nervous laugh, but the kid didn't even crack a smile. He explained that he was dropped off at school that morning, and he was supposed to get on a bus to take him to DAEP. Now, DAEP was the alternative school that kids who got suspended from school had to go to. Now his playing outfit started to make sense now. It was the infamous uniform of that alternative school. He then explained that he didn't want to go to the alternative school, so when his mom dropped him off, he pretended like he would wait for the bus and then hid in the nature trail for the full eight hours of the school day. He was still acting really skittish and without even looking at each other or speaking to each other. My friends and I could just feel that something definitely wasn't right and that we were in some kind of danger. The kid looked around nervously often, as if someone might have followed us, or if we were alone in the woods. We hit him with a, Alright man, well good luck. We're gonna try to get to our cars and go home before the pep rally ends. When he heard the word cars, he perked up. He started slowly walking with us towards the parking lot, continuing to talk. He becomes a lot more friendly now, and asks if we can give him a ride home. We give him some half-baked excuse why we couldn't, but he doesn't really take no for an answer. He tells us that people are going to start looking for him pretty soon, and that he was going to be in a lot of trouble if he doesn't get out of there. We tell him that he'd probably be fine hiding there deep in the nature trail, but he then just tells us, Nah man, you don't understand. I broke into a car at the fellowship. He pointed in the direction of the mega church that had a parking lot backed up to my school, then saying, I took this. From his waistband, he then pulled out a handgun, and I felt sick to my stomach. I had never seen a real gun like that in real life. At this point, I really felt like I was in danger. Not just because he had produced a gun. I had never really been scared of them. More so that the entire interaction just felt really uneasy. And that the guy was already unsettling and desperate to begin with. One of my friends then very cautiously tells him that he should probably just ditch it and take off somewhere. And he just stood there staring at us for a really uncomfortable amount of time. His eyes meeting each of ours. I broke the silence by saying that we wouldn't tell anyone, but that we really had to go before the pep rally ended. And then my other stupid ass friend, who had been virtually silent the entire time, then spoke up and said, Yeah, and it's really best we're not around if they start looking for you for that, pointing to the handgun. His eyes narrowed once more, and he asked if one of us could take him home. 
This time, however, it felt more like a command. I've never really been a super brave person, but in that moment, I don't know why, I just blurted out, Nah, man, I'm good. And again, there was a really uncomfortable silence. Then he asked, Before you leave, do you guys want to see something? My first friend was kind of a hothead, and although he was really uncomfortable with the situation, he wasn't afraid of conflict, nor was I. My other friend, however, wasn't a fan of conflict and would almost always de-escalate first. We all looked at each other and me and my first friend kind of had an unspoken understanding, like if this was really going to happen or if we were going to have to run or fight. My other friend was very visibly afraid. He asked, what is it that you want to show us? And before the kid could answer, my first friend then said, we don't want to see it, we have to go. My first friend started briskly walking past the kid, and me and my other friend quickly followed. Within a few steps, we just started sprinting towards the parking lot. I decided to look back once we were about 50 steps away. As I looked back, he was still just standing there, watching us run. He put the gun back in his waistband before taking a small adjacent trail back deeper into the woods. By the time we made it to the parking lot, there were police everywhere. We were sweating out of breath and absolutely terrified from everything that happened. They ended up finding the kid within the next 10 minutes. Somehow in the chaos, nobody saw us exit the nature trail and into the parking lot. But since there were so many cops in the parking lot, we decided to just head back inside through another side door, only to find out that the door was locked. That's when an administrator had found us, brought us inside, and then shoved us into a classroom where we were able to talk with the others and find out what was going on. This is what we could piece together from what we learned. Turns out that the kid had skipped DAEP, hid in the nature trail, broke into a car at the church, and then stole a semi-automatic shotgun and handgun from the car. After stealing the guns, he texted his girlfriend and he told her he was about to do something really terrible and that whenever she saw his name on the news, she should turn off the TV. He told her explicitly that he was going to kill all the kids at school. She knew that he was supposed to be in DAEP, and she was so worried about the text that she contacted the police. DAEP went on lockdown until officers got a call from a guy at church that had two guns that had been stolen from his car behind the school, and that's when they put two and two together and caught him hiding in the woods. I guess when he saw me and my two friends in the nature trail, he quickly hid the shotgun, but just didn't have enough time to hide the pistol. That or he just didn't care enough to hide. Whatever the case, I'm just really, really glad me and my friends got out alive that day. Who the fuck really knows what could have happened if we actually gave him a ride or stayed behind with them? It was a typical boring day in history learning about Qing Dynasty stuff, though it was our last two weeks of school before summer. Our school had a policy not to give tests anymore during the last week or two of the school year, but this section's teacher decided to break this rule and give his class a five-page English test. Good thing for us, our teacher was the chill type, so he decided to make a game in Kahoot about the past topics this school year. Anyways, it was about 40 minutes until our teacher then got a call and we thought it was just his family and stuff. But then I saw the look on his face and I'll never forget this moment in my life. The teacher then shouted, Guys, quick, close the door and barricade all the doors with your tables and chairs. And all of you be quiet. Don't no one shout or cry, got it? We did all of his instructions and our principal's voice came through the loudspeaker and then said, This is a lockdown. I repeat, this is a lockdown. There's six active shooters that have entered the building armed with very high powered armory and guns. Our principal was still about to say more things, but the announcement was abruptly stopped. My friend from another school had texted me and asked me if I'm okay. Apparently it wasn't only six active shooters, but it was ten. My friend also said that the SWAT had surrounded our school, but they couldn't go inside since they received an anonymous text that they have 40 students and 5 teachers hostage, and if they came inside, they would kill all of them. All of my girl classmates were crying, telling all their friends how they still want to live. They didn't stop for two hours when we heard rapid gunshots. Apparently the SWAT broke in and killed 5 of the active shooters roaming the hall, but when the other 5 shooters heard the gunshots, they then killed 15 students, including one substitute teacher. The lockdown lasted for about 7 hours, when the SWAT finally killed all the other 5 shooters in the room. The very next day, 
we all held a vigil for the families of the 16 people who died in the school shooting. Summer was called early, and the school went into some major renovations to upgrade their security, so that this very sad moment in the school's history will never happen again. And I really pray to God that it doesn't. Hey everyone, this episode has been sponsored by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-seasoned ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Enjoy a wide variety of easy delicious options for all three meals a day, plus every snack and special treat in between within the HelloFresh market. HelloFresh's high quality fresh ingredients are sourced directly from growers and delivered from the farm to your front door in under a week. Contact free of course. I love HelloFresh personally because it just really comes in handy on nights where I just don't really feel like cooking. Especially on nights when I'm just getting home from the gym. It just really makes things so much easier on me. Go to HelloFresh.com dinner14 and use code dinner14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Dinner14 and use code Dinner14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Alright everyone, let's get back into the stories. The story takes place when I was in about 3rd or 4th grade in a really decent sized urban area. Me and a couple of my friends were just goofing off at recess one day and we see a ton of police cars go flying down the street next to the basketball court where we were playing at, and then stop right in front of a house about a block up the street. Then all of a sudden, the bell rang to the corresponding code for a lockdown, and the principal came over the intercom telling everyone it's a real lockdown and definitely not a drill. I can still remember to this day just all the kids starting to freak out. No one knew what was going on, and all the kids that were on the blacktop kept getting asked what was going on. Because the way the school was situated, the blacktop area was on the other side of the building, so the street where the cops drove by wasn't in view of the rest of the playground. We ended up staying in lockdown for the whole rest of the day. The parents were told to come get their kids who walked home, and no one even knew what happened until later that night. I was in the living room with my parents and they were watching the news when I then heard exactly what happened. There was a man in the house where the cops had stopped at, who was in the second story holding someone hostage with a hunting rifle. He had a standoff with the police for hours before finally taking his own life. This incident has always really bothered me, knowing just how close I was to the situation and seeing the start of it, and it's definitely something I will never forget. This happened when I was in middle school. Now, this might not be as scary as what you're used to, but it did really freak me out. So, you know how schools typically have those troublemaker students? Well, one of them took it just a bit too far. It was on a Thursday, and I was in math class when I had overheard two students talking. I'm not normally one to eavesdrop, but what they had said really gave me the chills. One said that his friend was planning on coming to school with a gun. I didn't really believe this, so I tried to brush it off. But throughout the day, I noticed some of the students and even teachers looking like they were having a panic attack. Then the principal announced in the speaker that apparently a student had come to the office threatening to pull out a gun on them. That's when I then realized the conversation was real. My math teacher then locked the door and we all went quiet. Some time had passed and the speaker came back on, saying that the student didn't really have a gun and they let us all go home early. I don't know what happened to the student that caused this but I really, really hope he got suspended. Like I said, I know this really wasn't that scary, but it absolutely gave me the chills. I mean, I can't even imagine what would have happened if this was real. People should never joke about shooting someone, especially in a school. I went to a small school in Ohio. It was actually the second smallest school in the state. It was a winter day and I was in the 8th grade, I believe. I was sitting in class and I heard one of my classmates, who we'll call E, then speak up about what happened in his third period math class. He said that a kid in his class, who we'll call T, said that another kid, who we'll call C, had been threatened to shoot up the school. 
I was so scared by this that I thuddered as the thought of huddling in a dark corner of a classroom and running for my life then entered my mind. It was also a Friday night, which meant that boys basketball was in complete action in a game. It was also a home game, which meant that I had to go perform for the pep band. I didn't really mind that though. I loved band, and I loved being able to go out every Friday and Saturday night to have some fun with the upperclassmen who let me hang around them. My mom was driving me to school and I just couldn't get the thought of running for my life out of my head from earlier today. My mom noticed me doing this and she had asked me what was wrong. I broke down in tears and I told her that someone at the school had heard that someone was going to shoot it up. She was so worried for me and she assured me that everything would be okay and that she'd email the principal about it. I'd just finished up from pet band so I went back to the band room to put away my instrument and then have some fun before my mom came and picked me up. While I was sitting there watching the game, I had heard the principal call me to come with her. I went with her out the back door into the snow, and I was shivering from the cold. She asked me about what happened earlier today, and I told her everything that he told me in my class. She thanked me for telling her, and she'd said she'd look into the matter with the help from the local police. She said that if it wasn't for me telling her, we would have probably faced major tragedy and very possibly lots of death. I thought that I had done a great deed and saved many lives that day, and I did. The next day at school and onwards, I never saw C in the school ever again, so I guess he really was planning to shoot up the school. I still can't believe that if it wasn't for me, so many people could have died that day. It's crazy. So this happened when I was in elementary school and it was around 4th or 5th grade. I was really excited for the day because of course it was hat day, which is when you bring a dollar and give it to the teacher and you can wear your hat for the day. So the day went pretty normal, went to breakfast, had specials, went to class, etc. All that fun stuff. Now the best time of the day came around, lunch. So I was really excited because we go to recess after lunch, but I was also super hungry. So anyways. I get in line, get my food, pay, and sit down with some of my friends. Probably about 20 minutes or so goes by, and I was done with my food and kind of just sitting there chatting with my friends. Well, another 10 minutes go by, and I'm starting to get a little worried because we're staying a little longer there than usual, so I decide to get up to ask a teacher what's going on. The teacher just said she's sorry, and she doesn't really know herself. Another three minutes go by and the principal comes down and tells all the teachers to shut the cafeteria doors. Everyone's kind of freaking out a bit, but not a lot. They're just kind of confused on what's happening. The principal then comes in the cafeteria and then says, Listen everyone, pay attention. We're going on a soft lockdown, so please everyone stay in your seats and do not get up. Nobody is to be let out into the halls. And then she left. Around 20 more minutes go by and everyone is still a little freaked out. Some people are even starting to cry. So I'm basically talking with friends and chatting with people around me trying to keep my mind off of what's happening when the teachers then start to close the blinds on all the windows. The intercom starts up again and then says, Look everyone, we're going on a hard lockdown. Stay where you are. Everyone is totally freaking out now. An hour goes by and now half of the people are crying. I'm being a little dramatic bitch and I basically start writing on a paper about if I don't make it out alive, I love you type things. And so I'm literally having like a mental breakdown while half of the place is crying. I decide to get up and ask the teacher what's going on and what she then told me absolutely sent chills down my spine. There's people who are saying they're going to start a school shooting. They're protesting outside the school and police are outside as well. I literally just froze. I run back over to my seat and then tell all the people around me what's happening and just start hugging everyone, thinking this might be the last time that I'm ever going to see them or my parents again. After what feels like a hundred hours, probably just one more hour in reality, and the intercom comes back on. They're saying that we're now on a soft lockdown again. I'm still crying my eyes out and hugging my friends. Another 40 minutes pass and the lockdown is now finally over. We survived. Everyone is still kind of crying, but they're a bit more happy and stuff. So it takes us about 20 minutes to get out of the cafeteria. We eventually get out, and everyone's moms and dads are there to pick them up. I'm going into the classroom, just trying to think what the hell happened. 
After about 30 or 40 minutes of waiting while crying, my mom finally shows up. I hugged her the tightest that I've ever hugged anyone in my life and then went home. I was telling my mom what happened all the way home. I even later heard that they were apparently going to come back on Wednesday and then shoot up the school then. Well, as you can imagine, I didn't go to school that Wednesday. Yet nothing ever happened. I was still absolutely traumatized from this event. If you're the person that almost did this to us, I truly hope that we never meet. I really hope you burn in hell for traumatizing a 10-year-old girl who just wanted to wear a hat that day. You sick, awful fuck.